please. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Hello everyone. If you have a ruckus access point and you want to reset or restore your access point to its factory default settings, then you are watching the right video. In this video, I am going to show you how you can reset or restore the ruckus access point to its factory default settings. We can do this using three methods. 1. Using web interface. 2. Using SSH command line interface. 3. Using hard reset. By pressing and holding the reset button for 10 seconds. I will use the first method in this video while resetting the ruckus R510 access point. For second and third method, I will make separate videos. Before proceeding, let me tell you, it is very important for the first two methods to apply that you must have the necessary login credentials. I mean the IP address, username and password of the access point to apply the above mentioned methods or procedures to reset your access point. So, first make sure that you have the mentioned above login credentials. But, if you don't have the login credentials, then you must apply the third method which I will make another video on. The next important point is that, both the devices, I mean the laptop and the access point need to be physically on the same network, and both the devices must have the IP addresses of the same network. If your access point is on another network, then you will have to configure your router accordingly to add the information of both the networks for successful communication, and then make sure that you can access your AP from your laptop or PC. So, be with me, watch the full video and don't miss any step. I will show you everything step by step. If you are a beginner or you are not a technical person, you may leave your query in the comments section, and I will try my best to help you out in every possible way. Without wasting any further time, let's start the practical section. Step number one. Check the connectivity with access point. The first step is to confirm the connectivity between the access point and your laptop or PC. How will you do that? To check the connectivity, you must have the IP address of the access point. In my case, I am already using this access point on my network and I configured it accordingly. Hence, I have its IP address, username and password. The IP address of my AP is 10.0.2.40. I will now open the command prompt or CMD on my laptop or PC and ping the IP address. 10.0.2.40 of the access point. So, I will type ping space 10.0.2.40 in the command prompt and hit the enter button. As you can see, the access point is responding, which means that it is alive and will be accessible from my laptop. So, you will try to ping the IP address of your access point. If your access point is responding too then it means everything is going fine till now. If you successfully completed the step 1 then proceed towards step number 2. Step number 2. Accessing the web interface and confirmation of the current configurations. In step number 2, we will try to access the web interface of the access point and check the current configurations before resetting the access point. To access the web interface, I will open a web or internet browser. You can use any web browser which you have on your laptop or PC. Now I will type the complete URL, like this. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, followed by the IP address of the access point. In my case, I will type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 10.0.2.40 and then I will hit the enter button. If you see this page, then don't worry. Click on the Advance button. Now click on the link, proceed to 10.0.2.40. In your case, 
This IP address will be the IP address of your access point. After clicking on the link, the login page will appear. Here, enter the username and password and then click on the login button to log in to the web interface. Since I had changed the default username and the password for security reasons, while I was configuring the access point for the first time according to my network. So, I will enter that specific username and password here, not the default one. For your information the default username is super and the default password is sp-admin. After entering the login credentials, click on the login button. The management interface or web interface will open. Here, we will confirm the current configurations which I have on this access point. As you can see, I have changed the default configurations like the name of this device, and the location name according to my network setup. If I click on the internet option, you will see that the default and dynamic IP address of the access point has been set to a static IP address which is 10.0.2.40. The same way, I have created one wireless network or SSID against 2.4G and 5G with the name Ruckus Test SSID. After the confirmation of current configurations, I can say that this access point has no default configurations. Once we reset this access point to default factory settings, I will show you that all the configurations have changed. So, now I will proceed towards the next step. Step number 3. Applying method number 1 to reset or restore the access point via web interface. In this step, I will now show you how to reset or restore the access point via web interface. To reset or restore the access point, click on the Reboot slash Reset option under the Maintenance tab. On the right side of the page, there is an option which says Reset to Factory Settings. You can also see a text line with small fonts on the right side of the page which says Reset Now. So. Click on the link which says, Reset Now, with small fonts. As soon as you click on the link, the confirmation menu will appear. It is basically asking you that, if you restore the access point, you will lose all the configuration including the IP address. Since I want to reset all the current configuration to factory default settings, so I will click on the OK button. After pressing the OK button, the restoration process will start. Now wait for the process to complete. Until the access point is restored and then rebooted. It will take a few minutes. Meanwhile, if I ping the IP address of the AP, you will see that it has stopped responding now. Plus if we check the LED lights of the access point, you can see that the access point's LED light will go red, which actually means that the access point is rebooting now. That is the reason, it has stopped responding. The pop-up message appears, which says, I am all done, means that the access point has been successfully rebooted and we can reconnect again. When the LED light on the access point becomes green, it also means that the access point is rebooted successfully. Again wait for a few seconds, so that the access point goes into the stable mode. You can also see the message which says, Reboot complete, with green line, it also indicated that the AP's reboot process has been completed. Now the actual testing gets started. I will now open the command prompt or CMD, and I will try to ping the IP address of the access point which was 10.0.2.40. You will see that, I no longer get any response from this old IP address. What does that mean? Actually, it is because the access point has been restored to factory default settings. It will now be accessible via its default IP address which is 192.168.0.1. Note, 
If you don't know the default IP address and other credentials of the device, then don't worry. Normally all the devices have labeled the default credentials on its back or rear side. So, let's ping the default IP address, 192.168.0.1, of the ruckus access point continuously by putting the minus T switch at the end of the ping command. The minus T switch is used where the ping command will not stop until and unless we stop or pause it manually. Uh -huh. I get no response from the default IP address too. What is wrong with this access point? Don't worry, I will tell you why we are not getting any response from the default IP address. As I mentioned before that for successful communication, it is necessary that both the devices must have the IP address of the same network. Since I have not yet assigned any IP address to my laptop's Ethernet as of the access point's default network, that is the reason I am unable to communicate with the access point at the moment. So, I will first assign one of the IP address from the access point's default network. I mean from 192.168.0.2 to 192.168.0.254 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Remember. Do not assign the first IP address 192.168.0.1 to your laptop because it is already assigned to your access point as the default IP address. You can choose any other IP address from the rest of the IP addresses range. Let me assign the IP address from the default network of the access point to my laptop. I will open the network adapter settings, since I am connecting to my network via Ethernet cable. So I will right-click on the Ethernet and then click on the Properties option. I will double click on the option, Internet Protocol version 4. You can see, my own network's IP address is already assigned. To assign another IP address, I will click on the Advanced button. Then click on the Add button. I will type the IP address, 192.168.0.10, with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. You may replace the last octet with any number from 2 to 254, whereas I have entered 10 in the last octet. Again click on the Add button. Click on the OK button. Again click on the OK button. If I reopen the command prompt where I started the continuous ping command, you will see that default IP address of the AP has started responding now. Actually now both the devices, I mean the laptop and the access point have the same network IP addresses, so they start communicating now. If your AP still does not respond then I may recommend closing the CMD and reopen it. Then type the ping command again. Sometimes it happens that the ping command may stop responding. If you are successfully able to get a response from your access point's default IP address, then next we will try to access the web interface of the access point. I will open the web browser, and this time I will type the URL like https colon forward slash forward slash followed by the default IP address of the access point. This time I will enter the default IP address, which is 192.168.0.1. After typing the URL press the enter button. Click on the Advance button. Then click on the link which says Proceed to 192.168.0.1. You can see that I have got the login screen using the default IP address. Here, to show you I will first enter the old credentials when I configured the AP for the first time. It does not recognize the old username and the password. The question is why? Actually, this AP has been restored to factory default settings. So are the login credentials. I will now enter the default username, which is super, and the default password, which is sp-admin.
After entering the default credentials, I will click on the login button. Since the AP is restored. So, it will ask me to change the default password when I log in for the first time. I will type the new password and then retype the new password again for confirmation. After typing the new password, I will click on the Submit button. It will now again redirect me to the login screen, so that I will now log in using the new password. Now, I will type the default username but the password will be the one which we changed just few seconds before. Enter the new password, and click on the login button. Finally, here we are. You can see that all the configurations have been changed to default settings. The device name, the device location has changed. If I check the IP information, the IP has been changed and the status is changed from static to dynamic. If I check the wireless networks or SSIDs, you will see that all the wireless networks and SSIDs have been deleted. Note, it is very important to note down that if there is a DHCP server on your network which all the devices on your network are using to get IP address from, then the possibility is that the access point will get IP address from the DHCP server. In that case, First of all you need to make sure, which IP address is being assigned to your access point by the DHCP server. Then you can access the web interface of your access point using that assigned IP address but, you must use the default username and password. For your information, I will share a software named, Advanced IP Scanner. Download and install this software. After installing the software, open it and enter the IP address range of your DHCP network. It will find all the devices in that range on the network with assigned IP addresses, device names, MAC addresses and other details. Find your access point in the search devices list. Then you can try to access your AP's web interface using the IP address in the searched list. That's it. We are done here. We have reset a Ruckus R510 access point successfully to its factory default settings using web interface. If you think that it was a helpful video, then please do like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next video.